I'm going to be away for the long weekend, which means that I don't have a lot of time to work on Game Maker stuff this week. So because there is a non-zero chance that when this video goes live, my cousins and I will be smashing together some root beer and vanilla ice cream. Hello, all the crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about floats. So if you've been on the internet for more than about five minutes, you've probably seen the memes that go something like, um, in JavaScript, you can define a variable that's like a equals 0.1. Uh, and then you can define another variable that's something like um, b equals 0 0.2. Uh, and then if you were to add together a plus b, you would get something that is not exactly 3. Or the corollary to that is that if you add together a plus b, and if you try to equals equals it against 3, this is going to come up being false. Uh, in JavaScript's defense, as much as we love to make fun of it, this is not a JavaScript problem. This is a, a, a general computing problem, and some languages and programming environments have different ways of dealing with it or in some cases not dealing with it at all. So this is a classic floating point problem. So I'm sure the first thing you learned about computers is that they store everything in base two. That goes for numbers with fractional bits as well. Those are the floating point numbers. Without going too far into how floating point works, this means that within a reasonable amount of precision, you can store numbers that can be represented as a sum of powers of two or inverse powers of two uh, with exact precision. This means that any integer is safe. So like five or 10 or uh, one, three, three, seven or whatever as well as some fractional numbers such as like 0.5, uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.375 uh, can all be represented exactly in floating point. But there are numbers in base 10 which uh, can't be represented with an exact finite terminating uh, representation in base 2 such as 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Uh, this is sort of like in, um, in base 10 if you were to try to say one third uh, you would end up with 0 0.333 repeating. You can never get an exact representation of one third in base 10. And if you were to try to like add up 0.333 uh, times three, you would get something that isn't quite one. It's like very close to one, but not exactly there. Anyway, that's what's going on with this 0.1 plus 0.2 equals 3.0000004 uh, shenanigans up here. If you hang out on the programmer humor subreddit, this gets reposted in some form or another about once every four hours. I'm sure you've seen this before. So if I close out of this and head over to Game Maker, uh, we can do something, uh, we can try to emulate this little experiment by saying var a equals 1, var b equals 0.2, and then we can um, say show message, uh, we're just going to show a little pop-up on the screen, a plus b equals 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 0.3, and we can see what it says. Let's go down to the bottom to game end so I don't have to close the game window myself. Um, let me actually make this a little bigger. So if I run this, uh, we're going to see the game maker actually does not have this problem, at least on the surface. So if I say point, uh, point 0.1 plus point 0.2 uh, equals equals point 0.3, unlike in uh, JavaScript and unlike in a lot of other uh, programming languages, uh, we're going to see that this evaluates to true. So why is this? Um, you might wonder uh, if uh, game maker has some magic uh, floating point representation that is immune to this problem. And if you were to simply uh, sh show message a plus b, so convert this value to a string, and then uh, and then run it again. Uh, you might think that, that that we have something like that going on here because it will pop out 0 0.30 on the dot. Um, but this is likewise a little bit misleading. This is actually uh, there's kind of two things going on here actually. First is that when you convert a number to a string, Game Maker will by default truncate it to two uh, two decimal places or round it to two decimal places anyway. Uh, there is a function which you can use to make Game Maker spit out more decimal places when you convert a number to a string, and that is going to be string format. Uh, so this is uh, basically like a, uh, a fancier version of the string function, um, which you can use to format a certain number of uh, like a certain number of whole number place values uh, when you convert a number to a string, and also a certain number of decimal place values when you convert a number to a string. I'm going to just have it give me 20. Uh, that should be good enough. I want to say it's like 14 or 15 decimal places of precision that you get in 64-bit floats, uh, some, something to that effect. And if I do this, we can see that Game Maker uh, indeed gives us uh, 0 0.3 plus about 15 zeros and then 4441 at the end. So this is basically what we were getting in the JavaScript console when we ran this in, uh, in the browser at the beginning of the video. This is actually a few more decimal places than we were getting in the JavaScript, in the JavaScript console. Um, I hesitate to say it's more precision because everything after like a certain point in this number is just floating point noise and it doesn't really mean anything. So that's one mystery solved. Uh, Game Maker is indeed using regular 64-bit floating point numbers uh, to represent its 
it's a uh, it's real number system just the same way that javascript does so the second question you might have about all this is why does a plus b if this equals like 0 0.3 0, 0, 0, a bunch of zeros four um why does this equal equal 0 0.3 when you just evaluate it as an expression and um well, let's just say that if you've ever read through the bug tracker in Game Maker, your first uh, suggestion might be that Game Maker is actually just bad at math. And if we're being honest, that would not be unprecedented. But this is actually the result of something that's really useful in most cases that Game Maker does that I don't think it really ever gets credit for. So Game Maker is not actually comparing the entire 64 bits of floating point number. So here's the dirty little secret about things like programming languages and runtime environments. So when you implement a runtime environment or a, a, a programming languages compiler or something like that, um, you can actually kind of do whatever you want with all the arithmetic operators or whatever other operators your language happens to support. And the game maker runtime, both the the game maker VM and the and the YYC runtime, whichever you happen to be using. What they actually do when you call the equals equals operator is instead of like iterating over every single bit in the 64 bit floating point numbers on both sides of the equation um, and comparing them and seeing if they're the same, what the game maker runtime actually does is something like it takes the first term, which is going to be a plus b, and then it's going to subtract the second term, which is 0 0.3, and then it's going to uh, see if the result of that is less than something like 0 0.0001, something like five significant figures. I forget exactly what the default floating point tolerance is. And if the two operands on both sides of the equal sign are separated from each other by less than this number, then it's going to decide that that's close enough, they might as well be equal. And in a vast majority of cases in video games, this is fine. Um, if you're doing something like a scientific calculation modeling the entire observable universe or like a meteorological simulation trying to uh, compute tomorrow's weather or like a financial transaction, uh, this would not be fine. You don't want to do this. You want to actually have exact or as close to exact uh, floating point comparisons as possible uh, for things like that. But in games, like this is more than enough. If you want to check if like the player is on the floor, you don't want to ha like have the player on floor check like fail because they're actually off the floor by this amount that would be silly and this is something that game maker does behind the scenes that most people never know about this will very rarely throw a false positive for people and actually be a problem when they're they're doing something specific where a certain degree of precision is required and they're not getting it because of the uh the floating point e equality um doing this but on the whole this saves people way more trouble than it causes so the second question you might have or the third question or whatever number question that we're up to. I think this is actually like question five in this video. Um, is, is there any way that we can control the amount of precision we get when we do floating point comparisons? And as it turns out, there is. Uh, there is a function, math set epsilon. And epsilon is a fancy Greek letter, which basically means the tolerance between two floating point comparisons, at least in this context. And uh, by default, it'll be something like whatever this number is here. Uh, you can set the math epsilon to any number between 0 and 1, and that will determine how many significant figures of precision you get in your floating point comparisons. And I am pretty sure that this is implemented as significant figures. It's not um, the absolute value or anything. We'll, uh, we'll test that out later. Uh, but if we... Let's go back to our original example of a plus b equals equals 3. Um, if we were to go and say math to epsilon, I'm just going to insert a bunch of... Uh, I think I might actually need more digits than that. I'm just, just going to insert a bunch of digits here. Um, it needs to be greater than like the 15 or 16 significant figures that Game Maker, that floating point will offer us uh, before we start getting noise. That needs to be 0.3, uh, not, not 3. That's a little silly. So if I run this now, uh, we can see that A plus B equals equals 0.3 returns false. And uh, that is because the uh, precision that we're looking for in this comparison is uh, is greater than the actual is less than the actual difference between these uh, these two values here. So this can occasionally come in handy if you do actually run into any problems with floating point precision. Uh, you can either set this to like some small val value like this if you need more floating point precision in comparisons, or you can set it to some lesser value if you need, if you need less. So if I were to say something like 0.1 plus 0.25 equals equals three for whatever bizarre reason, uh, we can run this and this will, uh, this will make Game Maker say, eh, 0 0.3, 0 0.35, close enough. They're basically the same number. Um, I can't imagine that I can't imagine that you would ever want to do that. But if you did, you can. If I set it to like, if I set it to one, will this basically disable like, 
we'll just disable comparisons entirely. All right, so it doesn't let you go that far. It doesn't let you like disable comparisons entirely, but um, you can do some pretty silly things with this. Uh, let's see, where else do I want to go with this? So this will work slightly differently if you have an expression that is evaluated at compile time. Um, if you say, if you hard code 0.1 plus 0.2 equals equals 0.3, so this will return true, uh, according to GameMaker, like this. Um, but you can't, uh, in fact, you know what, let's just set that to zero. If I set maths ep epsilon to zero, or epsilon, I've heard it pronounced both ways, don't know what the official one is, also don't care. So if we disable our floating point epsilon, uh, this comparison will still return true. And the reason for that is that this is evaluated at compile time, and when you do compile time, that's going to run before any actual GML code runs. And um, the game maker compiler is instead going to see uh, see this comparison, and it's going to evaluate it using the default floating point precision that you get, and it's going to say, yeah, that's close enough. And at the current moment, there is no way to tell the game maker compiler what floating point epsilon it should use. Uh, there's no like compiler instruction that you can send it or anything like that. Uh, whether there should or shouldn't be might be a feature request for another day, but I'm not going to lose sleep over it. This is this is not something that you will generally really write. Uh, I guess occasionally you might have like three different uh, compile time macros that uh, you test like this for different configurations of your game or something like that that will be evaluated at compile time. But uh, for the most part, this isn't really something that you'll be doing. Uh, lastly, I had one other question, which is that if you uh, if you set the if you, if you set the epsilon value to like some high value, is this significant figures or is this an absolute value? So if I set this to like um, one point, or if I set this to, let's get, let's go 100 and like 201. And if I say A plus B equals equals 300. Um, or actually let's, uh, let's give it a couple more. Um, both significant figures and absolute values difference. So this should be like 30,010, but, um, if I run this, uh, will math set up style and just say that 30,010 and 30,000 are close enough because they're separated by, like, one part and 3,000. So let's see if this comes out to be true. All right, so it is an absolute value. It's not, um, like, it's not orders of magnitude or significant figures or whatever you want to call it. All right, that's cool. So my second question, uh, because I, I deliberately have not tested this because I, uh, I want to see what happens, is in GMRT, uh, has this been implemented in the same way that it was before? So GMRT, uh, for those who don't know, is Game Maker's upcoming future runtime, and I can't run it in this version of the IDE because we've, uh, the project format has changed, but GMRT doesn't recognize it. All right, that's cool. Uh, let me get out of the beta IDE and go into the monthly. Hang on. All right, so here we are in 2024 11. GMRT should actually work here. So if I run this in GMRT VM, uh, this is going to take a minute to get going, and when it does, it did not allow me to do show message. That's neat. Um, at least I think, unless it crashed some other way. Game Maker, please don't give me a hard time about this today. Wow. All right. Um, GMRT is just like randomly not compiling today, so I, I, can't, I can't figure this out uh, at the moment. All right, literally, why, though? Oh, my God, Game Maker, why are you doing this to me? Um, package Manager, is there, like, some problem with my GMRT installation uh, that wasn't here the last time I used it or something like that? All right, whatever. I guess, uh, I guess this mystery is going to have to wait for some other day. So I'm going to end this off here. This is how Game Maker handles floating point comparisons. Hopefully this is something that you'll never need to worry about, but if you do for whatever reason, then now you'll know what you have to do and why you have to do it. I am going to end this off here. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I like to post videos on weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, so if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. You should all go check out Wizard X and the Lost Hat, which is one of the games that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to the Steam page can be found down below. I hope you all enjoyed that, and I will see you all later. 
Special thanks to Zenjamin, Square Crow, Spy Dog Games, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Gamer Indie, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.